let me see if I can rephrase this. So you're you're saying that the 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 cows or the beef animals they they eat just plants yeah, and they're they really and they're really strong, right? Yeah, the no, there's no uh, um, there's no bone some from you see the the grower tall, the muscle strong. Right. Well, you know, I, I, I read once that if you want to be as strong as an ox, you should eat like one. And that's what I'm recommending, that we do exactly what they do. And that is eat the plants and drink the water and we'll be as strong and as powerful as they are. That we don't need to eat them because that's not good for us. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Mills. Up next, we have okay. a couple more questions and i um, going to unmute Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, uh, my question is about, uh, you, you mentioned the word regular consumption of, of animal products. Is there a reasonable consumption? And I, and I think I'm thinking more about the fact that we need B12, which comes from animals. However, they're probably eating out of an aluminum trough, so they're not even getting the B12. So what would you say about a reasonable consumption, especially for people who cannot really eat cooked vegetables? So... Let, let me, okay, let me be clear that all B12 is made by bacteria. No animal, no plant makes B12. B, all B12 is made by bacteria. The only reason there is B12 in animal foods to the extent that it's there is because the animals ate the bacteria. And the reason that we tend not to be able to get B12 in the, these artificial environments we've made for ourselves is because We've sterilized our environments and we've eliminated the natural sources of B12. So you don't need animal foods to get B12. You can take a B12 supplement. Um, and um, so I would encourage you to avoid the toxic compounds associated with animal foods and just take a B12 supplement. So my personal uh, opinion is that there is no reasonable intake of animal food. It's better to take a B12 supplement. Um, it's just healthier to do it that way. Doctor, that's great. We are up against the clock. We've got one okay. more quick question. If you could take it, can you take one more? Sure. All right, let's do it. This is our last one. And uh, Shashi, uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me a chance. I was praying to God that I should not be kicked off being the <laughs> last one. So uh, my question is, uh, I have been a vegetarian all my life, but last year we became vegan. And also became uh, low fat or no fat. And I, without doing anything, I lost 30 pounds almost. So my question is, yes, I am vegan, but I see that plants are genetically engineered. The manure is not compost or natural. And uh, there is um, so much of uh, uh, genetic engineering that, Am I going to come up with some new disease that the um, industry is doing to get the pumpkin become six foot size and the cabbage become purple and all those engineering things? How would they affect us in, in spite of being vegan and uh, SOS? Um, well, one, you know, a purple cabbage is naturally purple and um, you can try and, you know, and, and make sure that you are avoiding um, uh, GMO plants as much as possible. Um, and um, I don't, I, I honestly don't think that you um, will have to worry about that um, uh, as long as you're eating from a wide variety of plant foods and um, and try to avoid the GMOs as much as you can, um, you should be fine, honestly. Um, um, I, I, I know people who've been, I, I've been um, plant-based for um, um, over 40 years and vegan for the last 22, and uh, um, I haven't had any problems. So, uh, and I know people have been vegan, um, um, you know, for years and no problem. So I don't think you need to worry about that. Just make sure you're eating a wide variety of foods, uh, plant foods and eating all the colors and you will be good. Mm -hmm.